Hello everyone, we're going to talk about meiosis. So meiosis is different than mitosis. Mainly in that with meiosis you are producing four genetically different what, were, what are called gametes. So if you look here we have that term gametes. What gametes are Gametes are sex cells, and the sex cells are sperm or egg. Egg for female, sperm for male. So in meiosis, one cell becomes four non-identical cells. In other words, four genetically different cells. While in mitosis, you had two genetically identical cells being produced. Uh, so we talked about chromosomes. You know that chromosomes are coiled up DNA. In a human body cell, also called somatic cells, in a human body cell, we have 46 chromosomes in our body cells. So an eye cell would have 46 chromosomes. A bone cell will have 46 chromosomes. A toenail cell will have 46 chromosomes. But a gamete, or a sex cell, has half of that number, 23. So think about this. The mother has 23 chromosomes in her egg, and the, a father will have 23 chromosomes in the sperm, and what's 23 plus 23? 46. Meiosis. What are, there, okay, now, homologous chromosomes. This is not a term that you are going to be responsible for, but remember that the prefix homo means the same. So the prefix homo means the same. Homologous chromosomes are the same chromosome from each parent. So here we have blue representing the father, and here we have, I uh, guess, pink representing the mother's chromosomes. Uh, remember that chromosomes are coiled up DNA. Homologous chromosomes are chromosomes 1 through 23 that the father gives and chromosomes 1 through 23 that the mother gives. And 23 plus 23 is 46. That is probably a little confusing right now. It will make more sense. We'll talk about it more later. Uh, but the concept of homologous chromosomes is important but it will not be on your Unit 7 test. This will, however, be on your Unit 7 test. The idea of haploid and diploid cells. So, remember that the prefix di, di, means two. Like carbon dioxide has two oxygens. A diploid cell has two copies of chromosomes. In other words, one copy of the chromosomes from your mother and one copy of the chromosomes from your father. Our body cells are diploid. So a uh, brain cell is diploid. It has 46 chromosomes. A skin cell is diploid. It has 46 chromosomes. Diploid means two copies of the chromosomes. Haploid means half. That HA means half. So half of the number of chromosomes. The human gamete contains 23 chromosomes. Therefore, it is haploid. The number of chromosomes is represented by the letter N. Small n means the number of chromosomes. So if you see an N by itself, it's haploid. If you see 2n, it's diploid. What if it said 3n? Then that would be triploid. We'll be talking about that, just an example. The n represents the number of chromosomes. If you have n by itself, it's haploid. If you have 2n, it's diploid. Now, meiosis produces four genetically different 
gametes. Let's think about mitosis for a second. Mitosis has prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And what do you get after mitosis and cytokinesis? You get two cells. Well, if we get two cells after mitosis and we want four cells, meiosis is, in a way, mitosis twice. There are some differences, but meiosis makes four cells. To get four cells, you do prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis two times. So meiosis is divided up into meiosis one and meiosis two. In meiosis one, uh, you have the first set of nuclear divisions. Uh, meiosis is required for sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is the combination of the male gamete and the female gamete to make a new individual. Remember that the male gamete is haploid and the female gamete is haploid. One haploid plus one haploid gives you a diploid. And that's what the new individual is. Oh, sorry, very quickly. When gametes combine, that's called fertilization. So meiosis one. In meiosis one, we have interphase, just like we have in the standard cell cycle. During interphase, DNA replicates. Here it says chromosomes replicate. But what are chromosomes? Chromosomes are DNA. So DNA replicates during interphase. Okay, prophase one. A phenomenon called crossing over occurs during prophase one. We're gonna talk a little bit about crossing over during class. During crossing over, you have an exchange of genetic material. As you can see here, we have a pink chromosome from the mama and a blue chromosome from the papa. Notice what's happening. These are homologous chromosomes, which means that the DNA is, the, is generally the same. The genes are the same. We have slight differences between the two. Crossing over happens during prophase one. Crossing over is one of the ways that meiosis allows for variation. Now you have metaphase one after prophase one, just like in mitosis, chromosomes line up along the middle, and spindofibers attached to centromeres. Anaphase one, they're pulled apart. Now look very carefully at this. In mitosis, the chromosomes are separated. But in meiosis one, during anaphase one, they're not separated. Look very carefully at that. The X's are moved. Then you have telophase one, two new nuclei form, and the cell divides. The cytokinesis takes place right after telophase one. Now, we're gonna do it again. Look what we have here, prophase two. Just like prophase from mitosis. Metaphase two. Look, the chromosomes are lined up along the middle. Anaphase two, chromosomes are pulled apart. This looks very similar to mitosis. Telophase two, new nuclei form, and then you have a second round of cytokinesis. And now look what we have, four new cells, one, two, three, four, that are haploid. So importance of meiosis. Meiosis is two cellular divisions that produces four haploid daughter cells that are not identical. This results in genetic variation. Meiosis is the reason why you don't look like half of your mom and half of your dad. You are a combination of their characteristics. Meiosis provides variation. We're gonna talk more about this later and how the division of the chromosomes and division of the cells also adds to variability.
So let's look at this. We're going to finish up with this picture here. Mitosis versus meiosis. Here in red, you have mitosis. And here in blue, you have meiosis. Major differences is meiosis, in a way, you can think of it like this, is that meiosis is mitosis twice. In mitosis, you have a diploid cell that replicates to produce two identical diploid cells. Somatic cells, somatic cells, body cells. Mitosis produces two genetically identical somatic cells. Meiosis produces four haploid gametes. And depending on the gender of the individual, it could be a sperm or an egg. Meiosis is the same in any organism that reproduces sexually. So a rose carries out meiosis. Squirrels carry out meiosis. Dolphin carry out meiosis. Fish carry out meiosis. If they are a sexually reproducing organism, then they produce their gametes through meiosis. Okay, that's that. Do you have any questions? Let me know.